Hey guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. It is time for my October Body Mods Q&A. For those that have been following along with this Q&A, I primarily started it as a Pearson one, but then I opened it up for tattoos. So I asked the other day, you know, if you had any questions, please send them my way. I found the questions that were asked on the last Q&A video. So just as a heads up, if you want to ask something for November's Q&A, leave them on this video because this will be the only video I check for questions for next Q&A. As I say every single time, if I don't read your specific question, it's just because I've answered it in a past Q&A and I don't want to keep repeating myself. Or because it got asked multiple times in this one and I just picked one. It was luck of the draw. So let's just go ahead and get started. I was wondering if you have any ideas about how to plan Pearson's. My friend didn't plan hers and now just wants fresh ears and start over. I don't want the same to happen to me. I've been asked this before, like how I planned the layout of my ears when I got my piercing done. If I'm being honest, I didn't really plan. It just kind of went, I got one piercing and then I felt that it was lopsided. So then I got one on the other side and then I felt like I needed something over here. And I'm not all for symmetry on my ears, but honestly, I didn't really plan my piercings out. They just kind of happened. Luckily for me, it, it happened in a way that worked. I do know some people, you know, are the same. They don't plan and somehow it doesn't work out. For me, it just, it did. And honestly, I don't really know how to say how to plan for piercings since I didn't actually experience that. But I would just say, if you think you're gonna get multiples in the future, just look at the layout of your ear, first of all, to make sure that your ear could handle it, and then just see how each different Pearson might work with one another. Like, I'm not entirely sure, say a date and a Rook would work well together because they're so close. That's why mine are opposite ears from one another. So just look into the different ones. And, and this is just primarily thinking about ears right now. Just think how each one lays out in an ear and which ones might end up overlapping and which ones just, it would look too cluttered. That would be my biggest advice in planning your Pearson out for your ears is to just make sure that it doesn't look overly cluttered with like overlap or something. Does that make sense? Do you recommend Tegaderm healing method? So I've only used Tegaderm twice. The first time was on this F up of a finger tattoo right here. And the other time was on my wolf tattoo when I was getting it touched up. I really liked it. I liked the fact that I didn't have to worry about cleaning my tattoo for three days. I thought that was fantastic. You know, I could just come home right after my tattoo and not worry about it. That was, oh my God, that was such a good feeling for me. The only problem was that when I did take the Tegaderm off, there was a little bit of irritation like where the edge adhesive was because the whole thing ends up being an adhesive. But like the edge part, for some reason that wasn't on the tattoo, that was a little irritated, but that's just because I have sensitive skin. Don't know why I didn't irritate the rest of the tattoo, but I personally really like it. I don't know how like it varies from being put on a small piece versus a large piece. I don't know if one is better than the other, but when I get my next tattoo, I'm definitely going to ask for the Tegaderm because it was such a good feeling not to have to clean it for the first three days. It was wonderful. What do you think of brands BBLA, Anatometal, Neometal? They are the higher end brands for the Pearson jewelry. So as someone who has only Anatometal in her body right now, I am all for them. I am of the mindset you get what you pay for. I always am willing to pay top dollar for high end jewelry. It's one of those things where my body doesn't tolerate types of jewelry like surgical steel. It really just likes titanium. I can put other things in there such is like my nostrils. I can put surgical steel in and it'd be fine now. There was a time where a bump would have developed if I did that, but I can put that in now. Some of my cartilage ones that I've had for a while, I may be able to do that for. My septum, I can definitely do pretty much any type of metal or material, but there are specific ones. Like if it's two years or younger, I, I wouldn't put anything else in other than titanium. So I am all for the higher end ones. I don't know the BVLA. I don't know that one. 
but the other two I definitely know and pretty much all of my jewelry is and it's metal. I got my septum pierced with a 14 gauge retainer and changed to a 20 gauge nose ring after six weeks and then tried to get the original retainer in but it doesn't get through anymore. I kind of feel like my piercing is closing even though I still have the ring in. What do you suggest? I'd like to go back to 14 gauge or at least 16 gauge. So after six weeks your piercing definitely is trying to shrink up. Maybe not necessarily close up unless you left something out for far too long that it probably would but it definitely shrunk up because you went from a much larger size to a much smaller size there's a huge difference between a 14 gauge and a 20 gauge like a massive difference my only suggestion is to just wait with the 20 gauge piece of jewelry that you have in right now to give it time to heal if it's less than three months old six months old i definitely wouldn't change it Again, probably shouldn't have changed it at six weeks. Just leave it in, let it heal, and then my only suggestion would be to, to kind of stretch back up if you wanna to get to the 14. That's that's really the only thing I can offer. My day duh, bump is raw and fleshy and not like a normal dry bump. How can I clear it? I'm, mm, that's a little, that's different because usually it's like you say, it's not a normal like dry bump. That being said, my day, duh, Pearson ended up having a kind of raw fleshy thing to it. I would still do your salt soaks, maybe not as aggressive as you would with a dry one, just because when it's raw and fleshy like that, it can irritate it. So I would still continue with your salt soaks, but just not as aggressive with it. So maybe not as often or as, or as not as long, but don't let it just ride out. If you were a piercer and could only perform one piercing, which would you choose? Probably something that I could get to easily. So like maybe a nostril, maybe an outer cartilage. I would not want to do a day stuff or a rook for that matter, or a septum because there's a lot that could mess up there. Probably nostril. If I have to pick one, probably nostril. It's just so open and easy to get to. I have a bump on my day that won't go away. Could it be the jewelry? Standard horseshoe. Could definitely be the jewelry. It could be the metal of the jewelry. Your body may not like that specific metal, especially if it's something like surgical steel. I would go back to your piercer and be like, hey, what do you think? And maybe they can swap it out to some better quality jewelry for you, like titanium. I push titanium a lot, but honestly, it's just because as someone with sensitive skin, I find that titanium works miracles at alleviating issues like that. So that's why I push it so much. So definitely go back to your piercer and just talk to them and be like, hey, this bump will not go away no matter what I do. What do you think? Can we change the jewelry out potentially? I mean, you're gonna have to put out a little bit of money if you want to get that better quality jewelry, but it's so worth it in the long run. How often can you change your jewelry, specifically cartilage piercings? Once your piercing is healed, you can change it whenever you want. If you want a different look every day, go for it as long as your body doesn't react to the irritation that comes along with changing the jewelry. I mean, but but otherwise, once it's healed, and that is the key component there, once it's healed, you can change it however often you want. Now, if it's not healed, I still wouldn't touch it. If you do feel like changing it after like six months or something like that, I would change it and then kind of leave it alone for a bit before you change again. Hey Gretchen, I just got my lobes done and my shirt got caught on the stud. Now my ear hurts when I touch it. Any advice? Just leave it alone. Don't don't mess with it anymore. You, I mean, it may have irritated it when it tugged on it. Continue to clean it like normal. Hurting is just part of the process for healing a piercing, but just don't mess with it. I know when it starts hurting, you're like, oh my God, what have I done to it? Take some Tylenol, clean it like normal, and just leave it be. If one piercing doesn't heal properly, does that mean all piercings won't heal properly? Not at all. All. Every person is different. Your body just reacts differently to each one. I mean, I often think about my day stuff Pearson because it had such a horrific healing process, but it's fine now. But the rest of my Pearson's, you know, on the same ear, in the same area, just all of my piercings in general were never that bad. So just because one doesn't heal well, doesn't mean another one won't. Are you getting full sleeves? I would eventually like to get full sleeves. I'm just working on one arm right now, which is this one over here that has the squirrel and the hedgehog on it. I want to get like a raccoon added to it. This is going to be like my little critter arm. I do want that 
to eventually be a sleeve. I'll eventually get to over here, but right now I just have my crow sitting on the skull and that's just how it's gonna stay for now. I'm primarily just focused on this arm. But yes, eventually I would like full sleeves on both arms. Tips on hiding ear piercings apart from wearing hair down and retainers. Don't get them. Pretty much that's your main way of hiding them. Keeping your hair down, cause like, as you can see with my hair down, you can't really see anything. And retainers are meant to do just that, to basically hide your piercings. I don't really know any other ways unless you want to put a whole bunch of band-aids over your ears. Anyone else has any suggestions, leave them in the comments below because I really can't think of anything. I mean, re that's retainer's purpose is to hide piercings. I don't know what else to say. How do you respond when people tell you you have too many piercings? Thanks for your input, but it's my body. I'll do what I want. Tried changing my helix after three months and it started to close. Any tips on that other than to just leave it alone? Three months is still, it's that point where it may be fine to change or it may not be fine to change. There are piercings of mine that that I've had for years that if I left out jewelry for too long, they would close up. That's the name of the game. That's how it works. If, if you're going to change it out, my best piece of advice is to be fast. Get that jewelry in, have it ready for when you take it out and then put in another one because it can start to close almost immediately. I have 14 ear piercings. What does a blood blister look like and how do you get rid of one? Interesting question. So a blood blister looks basically like a really red squishy bump. I only developed one on my tragus. It was gnarly. When I first got my tragus done, it really hurt for a while afterwards. And so I got my mom to look at my ear. And when she looked on the back side of it, she was like, you have a massive blood blister. So what we ended up doing was we took the jewelry out. And for some reason it was so thin, like the layer of skin that it just burst and it looked like my ear was bleeding profusely. And then, so I cleaned it up before I put jewelry back in got the jewelry in and it was fine. Went away completely. But basically a blood blister is just like a regular blister filled with blood. And tips on getting rid of it, just clean it. It'll definitely be a little bit more sensitive to the touch than a regular piercing bump. If it pops, it's not the end of the world. Just continue to clean it. And hopefully at that point it goes away. But I wouldn't aggressively go after it because that could make it worse. What happens if you get sick when you have a fresh nostril piercing? Ooh. That's a good one. Just continue to clean it. You might need to clean it more often and not necessarily with the actual saline solution, but like getting a tissue or a Q-tip up into your nose and cleaning out any snot that may have accumulated on your jewelry. I'm trying to think if I ever experienced that. I know I had allergies for like my first one, but I don't think I had like a whole bunch of buildup, mucus buildup. Just be aware of what may be developing in your nose as opposed to normal. You can still blow your nose, just be a little cautious with it. Don't like grab onto your nose like you might normally when you blow your nose. That's pretty much all I can advise on. You can still have a fresh nostril piercing and be sick, it's totally fine, but just try not to let any mucus or anything build up on the jewelry and just go about your time. Try and take care of yourself. Should I risk an ear cartilage piercing if my nostrils took a year to heal? They've always been healthy, but took long to heal. Absolutely. Sometimes some piercings take longer to heal than others. I know my nostrils took a really long time to heal. Then again, some of my cartilage piercings took a really long time to heal. It really just depends on your body and where you've gotten the piercing. Not all piercings are the same. Not all piercings should be treated the same. Just because one took a really long time to heal does not mean another one will. So go ahead and get that cartilage piercing. Will you be doing a video on your most recent piercing? What recent piercing? Just kidding. Of course I will do one because if you've been following me for a while, you know I've wanted this thing for a really long time. So of course there will be a video and hauls and all sorts of things for it because I'm so excited for it. Getting my day pierced next week. Any advice on cleaning it as it's way inside the ear. Clean it just how you would any other piercing. My preferred method is with a Q-tip. 
Just spray some H2 lotion on it. Just kind of get in there. That's about it. That's all you really need to do. Sometimes you can spray the H2 lotion directly on it. Even though it's like way in there, you can still get in there enough to clean it. I mean, just clean it like you would any other one. What do you have to say to someone getting their first body or facial piercing? Not ears. Just keep up with your aftercare and don't touch it or move it or anything like that. Like if you get a nostril piercing, you're gonna notice the bump for the first few weeks. It's, it's gonna be prominent. Like I don't really see mine anymore unless I look cross-eyed but when I first got it done you can see that bump out of the corner of your eye don't mess with it clean it like you're supposed to but don't mess with it and the final question is what piercing do you think anyone could get and have it adore them I'm assuming you mean like anyone could get and it looks good on them I'm gonna go with that really and truly any piercing if you're happy with how it looks on you, that's all that matters. Who cares what anyone else thinks? I get called a bull all the time because of my septum. Do I let that bother me? No, because I absolutely love it. So it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. If you think it looks good on you, that's what matters the most. And that is it for October's Body Mods Q&A. If you have any of your own answers to any of these questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm sure the people who asked the questions would appreciate responses from others. If you have questions that you would like featured in the November Q&A, leave them below in the comments because this is gonna be the only video I look at for the November q and I'll also ask the question on Instagram for those that wanna ask over there, but that'll happen closer to the time that I start filming. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, because I don't know, even though I do, this is just my shtick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you wanna know when I upload, and in case YouTube, wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys. <laughs>